All right, this is the last one of chapter nine. Are you too excited? So, uh, chapter nine here, uh, all been about transformations. Uh, before we get into the very last one that we're going to deal with, uh, we're going to do the kickoff. So, two figures are congruent. Uh, determine if the one figure is translation image of the other or rotation image, or if it's neither. Well, again, if we take this, it looks like we could have had a dot here and we would have taken it and just rotated it right around. So we're there and then we're moving it and boom, there's our five. So this one would be a rotational image. Yeah. So again, looks like we're the same orientation. So we haven't flipped it at all. We're just taking it. You know, we're not necessarily sliding over because we'd be facing the same way. We were turned a little bit. So that turn means we're a rotation. So this last part of transformations is we're going to deal with tessellations. So a tessellation is a repeating pattern of figures that completely covers a plane without any gaps or overlaps. So this could be any real figure as long as it fits together and won't leave a gap or an overlap. So what's the thing that's tessellating here? Well, I mean, it's kind of the, the black, well, bird in this case. Um, not black elephant, but the thing that really sticks out here is this shape right here, this bird. But what that does is here, we're just taking it and we're flipping it over and then it fits all back together again. So these are all going the same way. They fit together and then the next row they're flipped and they all fit together and they all fit together and they all fit together. So that's the idea is this, is there's no gaps, no overlaps. Now this pattern, they made it nice and awesome where they colored it in and made it look like a bird. And so they gave some color to these tessellations. So this is where, if you look at the back of my room, we have all those shapes in the back. Those are tessellations. And that's what you're going to get to do today. But before we can do that, we need to learn a little bit about, well, how can we make tessellations? Well, the first thing is it has to be able to have corners that uh, would be factors of 360. So 360 goes all the way around. So if you think about it, all these have to be factors of 360 so that they fit together and don't leave an overlap or a gap. If it's not a factor, by the time you fit things together, you're going to have an, a gap or it's going to overlap. And either way, that's not going to make a, a tessellation. So will it tessellate? Well, first off, 18 and gone. Well, how many sides is an 18 and gone? Well, 18. Well, how many degrees is that? Well, that's where we're going to use that... Um, n minus 2 times 180 to get the number of degrees that those angles would add up to be when you put them all together. So what each 18 agon angle would be. So in this case, we would do 18 minus 2 times 180, which is 16. So if we go to our calculator and we go 16 times 180, all those added together would end up being 2880 so 2,880 degrees. Well, what would each angle be? Because that's really what we need to focus on is we need one interior angle that would be able to be a factor than whatever its measure is, factor of 360. So we're going to take this and we're going to divide it by 18. So dividing it by 18, each angle is end up going to be 160 degrees. So to see if it's a factor, we're going to take 360 divided by 160. So 360 divided by 160 so 360 divided by 160 in your calculator, and you end up with 22.5. So in order for this to be a factor, you have to get a whole number here. If you get anything of a decimal or a fraction, well, if it's a mixed number, I guess, it's not going to tessellate. So in this case, this is a no. It has to be a factor to make that work. Well, what are two things that will work are every single triangle will be a factor of 360. Every sort of angle, we can make that work and it would tessellate. Same thing with quadrilaterals. Those would also tessellate. Because if you think about it, a triangle, triangle we know is 180 degrees for those inside. Well, 180 divided by the three corners leaves us with 60 degrees. Well, 360 divided by 60 would be six times. So we get a whole number, so that's why it tessellates. Quadrilateral, well, all the angles of a quadrilateral will add up to be 360. So if we divide that by 4, 
360 divided by 4 would be 45. No, bigger than 45. Yeah, 45. What am I doing? 4 goes into 36. 90. Wow. And I'm the math teacher. I am so sorry on that. This is what happens if I rush. So use this as a lesson. Take your time. Make sure you do your calculations correct and don't rush your answers. So 360 divided by 4, 4 goes into 36, 9 times, add the 0, 90. Well, again, 360 divided by 90, well, guess what? It's 4. Again, we get a whole number here, so that means it's going to tessellate. Now, with tessellations, we can have reflectional symmetry, rotational symmetry, translational symmetry, or glide reflectional symmetry. So what we're really saying is to make a tessellation, we could take it and we could rotate it and have it fit in there and make that tessellation work. We could then take it and reflect it over and have it fit in there and have it work. We could take it and we could have it slide over and it would work. Or we could take it and we could slide it and flip it and make it work. So all of those isometries could be used to make a tessellation. So if we think about a regular hexagon. So hexagon, we are six sides. Not going to lie. This might have been my best hexagon I've ever made. Good time for it, right? So could we take this hexagon and slide it over and it would match up into this? Yeah. So this one would have translational. Actually, I should just grab a hexagon and I can show you. So got some hexagons here. So hexagon. See, even better hexagon. So we could take this, slide it over. So from here to here, boom, slide it in and it fits and we could keep going. See, just look there. Boom, tessellates. We could take this shape and we could turn it. And again, it would fit in where that spot would be. So if we turn it, so that would also fit. So this one would have rotational. We could take this and we could flip it over. And again, it could fit into that pattern wherever we're going with it. So the reflectional. So we could take this, we could flip it over and we could slide over and again, it would fit. So this one would also have glide reflectional. So this one will actually have all of them. Okay. So, all the different options here with um, with a hexagon. And uh, that is it. So that is chapter nine. Chapter nine is all over now. And now the fun part starts. So get prepared for the assignment, which you'll find out when you look on Google Classroom or in class, whichever works next. But fun assignment that's coming along with this one gets you out of the book and onto some paper making some tessellations. But um, we'll talk about that another time. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know um, and I can address those and try to help you out to get you on the right path. Um, otherwise, until next time, we'll talk to you later.